Hey guys, this is the second video for 1.3 quantities of atoms. We're going to go through the third science understanding for today. So this is going to look at how we can use what we call the mole formula. So just as a bit of a refresher, remember that one mole of a substance or of anything is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of it. And we know that measuring the amount of substance is often more ex easily expressed using the mole. So how can we actually determine the number of moles if we actually are given the number of atoms? So let's just go through an example. And we're going to use the uh, dozen again, just as an example. So if we're asked the question, how many dozen are in 48 units? Well, we know that there are 12 units in a dozen. So what we can do is just divide the total uh, number here, 48, by the number in one dozen. So 48 divided by 12, and that gives us four dozen. If we have a look at another example, how many dozen are in 144 units? So again, in this case, we just take that, uh, that total number, 144, and we divide by the number present in one dozen. And if we do this, we should end up with 12 dozen. We can then establish a formula from this relationship here. So if we want to work out the number of dozen of any number of units, that would be equivalent to just the total number of units divided by 12. If we now apply the concept of the mole, we can actually come up with a similar formula. But instead of talking about dozen, we're talking about mole. So if we want to work out the number of moles of a particular substance represented by n, it'll just be the total number of the particles divided by the total number of particles in one mole. So a first example for today is going to look at determining the number of moles of carbon atoms if there are 4.85 times 10 to the 24 of them. So what we can do is just uh, substitute our numbers in. We've got here the number of moles is equal to the total amount present, so this number here, divided by the amount present in one mole. And I've done the calculations already, but you can go ahead and check it if you'd like. We should end up with a number equal to 8.05 moles. And I've put in there to three significant figures. So keep in mind that our answers can only have as many significant figures as our data that's given. And if we have a look at our data here, we can see that this number in scientific notation has one, two, three significant figures. So our answer can only have one, two, three significant figures. If we look at a, a second example, determine the number of moles of oxygen atoms if there are 15,200 oxygen atoms. You might already realize that this is much less than the previous example, but the formula doesn't actually change. So we're going to state our formula for the number of moles, and that's going to be equal to the number of uh, particles present. So we've got this many oxygen atoms, and we're going to divide that by the number present in one mole. And if we do that again, I've done the calculations, we get an answer of 2.52 times 10 to the negative 20 moles, and that's to three significant figures. One thing I will just point out is that the units for moles is written as M-O-L, and that's just short for moles. So it's like saying CM is the abbreviation for the units of centimetres. If we want to do the opposite, so if we're given the number of dozen of a particular uh, object, we know that one dozen is equal to 12 of those particular objects. If we were to look at, say, two dozen, then we know that's equal to, well, two lots compared to the amount in one dozen, so two lots of 12, and that gets us 24. If we look at, say, 15 dozen, then the total number of uh, units is equal to 15 times the amount present in one dozen, which is 12, and that gets us 180 units. So from this information, we could come up with a formula. If we know the number of dozen uh, of units, of a particular unit, then we can work out what the total number of those units are. So our formula would be equal to, so the number of units is equal to the number of dozen multiplied by the amount present in one dozen. 
we're going to go ahead and apply the same idea to looking at moles. So if we have one mole of atoms, again, we know it's equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. If we have two moles of atoms, well, that's simply twice the amount present in one mole, or two times this number here. And if we work that out, we get 1.204 times 10 to the 24 atoms. Another example, if we say have a fraction of a mole, so 0.5 mole of atoms, all we need to do is just multiply that number there, 0.5, by the, the amount present in one mole. And we end up getting 3.011 times 10 to the 23. You should probably see the pattern now, but uh, what we're going to do is just uh, finalize that in a formula. So this is just something to take note. If we want to work out the number of atoms present given the number of moles, then it's the number of atoms being equal to the number of moles multiplied by the amount present in one mole. Okay, and that just tells you n is equal to the number of moles. Now, another concept and another term that's important to come across is what we call the molar mass. We use a capital M to represent the molar mass. We already know that one mole of an element is equal to this number here. So we've uh, determined that many, many times before. What we could do is look at measuring how much or what the mass of one mole of a substance is. And when we do that, we have what we call the molar mass. Molar mass has the symbol capital M, as I mentioned earlier. But the units that we use are grams per mole. So in other words, the mass per one mole of a particular substance. These are just different ways we can express the units for molar mass. And we would expect that you can actually use both in your calculations. Let's go back for a moment. And uh, I'm just going to use carbon because remember carbon is used as a standard. And we can say that the relative atomic mass of carbon-12 is taken as exactly 12 AMU. Now, through experimentation, it has actually been determined that if you measure one mole of carbon-12 atoms, it ends up equaling to 12 grams. What we can say is that the molar mass, and I've put in brackets here for carbon-12, is equal to 12 grams per mole. That means that one mole of carbon atoms is going to equal 12 grams. So we can, in other words, just say that the molar mass is 12 grams per mole. We know, however, carbon exists as a, a mixture of diff different isotopes, so carbon 12, 13, and 14. And we know that the relative atomic mass is actually 12.01 AMU. So if we apply this sort of same idea, if we measure the molar mass of carbon in nature, it actually is equal to 12.01 grams per mole. So this reflects the uh, weighted averages of all those different isotopes present for carbon. And because we can actually just directly link the relative atomic mass to the molar mass, we can actually use the periodic table to uh, find the values for the molar mass of various different elements.